Welcome back. So in the last video, we left off with the Pathfinder and Shape Modes, and that allowed you to merge objects together, subtract objects from one another to create new objects. Uh, and that's a pretty important aspect in Illustrator um, in creating artwork. Um, today's video is about layers, and to me that is one of the most important aspects of Illustrator and seems to bring people quite a bit of anxiety. They don't understand what layers are. And rest assured, layers are very, very easy to understand. Um, I like to think of them as transparencies that like your teacher would use and they could write or do whatever they wanted on them. Uh, that's essentially what layers are. They're just blank slates that you can slap artwork into. Uh, you can then isolate that layer to work on it. You can create multiple layers with um, different pieces of artwork um, and use them as some sort of grouping mechanism. Um, they're just, they're essential. So let's get started. I'm gonna go ahead and create some shapes real quick. Some rudimentary stuff here. Polygonal, and remember in the previous videos you can learn working with these shapes. So I'm just gonna slap some colors real quick. And okay, so I have these three shapes and you'll notice right now my layers menu. It should be layers one. I had this document open. I'm gonna go ahead. This this is your default, but you'll start with layer one. Um, I have three objects in layer one. I can then go ahead and expand this, and you'll see that it I now have sublayers. So each object creates a sublayer within the layer that you're working. So you'll see that I have the triangle, the square, and the circle. Now within your layers menu, you're gonna notice some eyeballs these blank squares here, these little circles here, um, and there's actually space here. These are all to um, toggles that you can click uh, that will affect your layer's appearance or selection uh, or being able to lock the layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that now. So the visibility is exactly what you think it is. Right now, this layer is visible. I can turn the layer off. Uh, being that this is the only layer, you'll notice it turned off the artboard's boundaries um, that won't happen when you have more layers, but um, but when you do turn off all the layers, you're going to notice that your that nice gray um, boundary disappears. Uh, but anyways, that's visibility, and you can you'll notice I can turn off the sub layers without affecting the main layer. So that helps you when you're creating artwork and say you just want to work on the triangle. You can turn these two off and and get to work on your triangle, moving it around. Turn them back on. You can also lock them and keep their visibility. So now you'll notice I can't click the uh, triangle in the square. I can move this circle around now. So that helps you isolate as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and unlock those. Or you can just do an overall lock and now I can't touch any of this stuff. So that is the main layer and sub layers. You'll notice also when I have this layer selected uh, I have a drop down menu and there's plenty of options here. Um, I won't go too in depth uh, because this is again just a beginner's power training uh, but it's pretty pretty simple stuff you can mess around to learn you got a new layer a new sub layer which will create the um, I like to think of it this is your parent layer and these are the children and the children get the indents so uh, you can create a new layer and a new sub layer when you're selected on the actual layer and not a sub layer you can duplicate the layer you have the options for the layer which I'll click now uh, the options, you can rename this layer, and I'll just rename it Shapes. This helps you organize, and I highly recommend getting used to doing that. Um, the color that this is referencing here, you'll see is like red. I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK for now. You'll notice I have a red boundary. Uh, the bounding box is red as well for each of these. You can change that, and you'll notice the colors here as well, and this little strip indicates what the selection color will be. So you can go ahead and hit the drop down menu, go to options for shapes, or I mean options for shapes, which is the layer, um, and it brings this box back up. Or you can just double click anywhere. If you notice, I double click on the name, I can change the name. If I double click away from that, it'll bring this same layers option menu box up as well. And then I can go through here, and here's some default colors. You know, if I'm not comfortable with seeing that specific color, I can change it. Okay, do for orange. Now you'll notice that the strip and the sublayer strips have to turn to orange. 
as long as well as the selection indicator. Now you'll notice here um, the this the circle dots right here are the toggles for the appearance. So if you've applied appearances, say drop shadows and strokes and all that stuff, you can actually click and drag them into another layer. If you notice, I'm dragging that green appearance into these other layers. So um, you can go ahead and do that. It targets that specific appearance. Um, and this box over here, you'll notice the little orange box, that is for the selection. If you notice, I'm clicking, you probably hear it on the mic as well, I'm selecting those sub layers. So that helps you, um, you know, s select specific parts of your artwork. Um, I'm going to show you a working example um, how this can be beneficial. Now, let's say we have a bunch of these circles. I'm going to go ahead and create this one. I'm going to create these and paste. I'm just going to keep paste. Whoops. Keep alt, click, and dragging these. And let's just say this is some crazy artwork. It's really intense. I'm you know, working on a comic book character. But uh, I'm just using this as the example for it with these red dots. Let's go ahead and move that green down and get that nice and hidden in this artwork. <coughs> Now, I've gone, and you've noticed, as each shape I've created, it's created a sublayer with it. And that gets really, really long. You can <coughs> uh, go ahead and collapse it back down, and you'll notice it's just back in this, that simple layer that we've labeled shapes. Um, the green one's disappeared. You know where it is since we're working on it, but say you've been working for an hour or so and you, and you forgot where that shape was and it was something that you didn't realize that you had covered up. That's when you'll go into layers and you can look all the way down. There's our green dot. We can hit the selection. He's selected now. Beautiful. And we can use our object arrange to bring it to the front if we wanted to. Or if we wanted to keep it in the same area and have it poke out, we could then use our move tool to move it out. Um, but that allows you to find those specific shapes within within the sublayers of your main layer uh, and make changes. Um, say you wanted that green to be red, you can then click the appearance of another color, drag and drop it onto that uh, that sublayer, and it'll change the color. So now you've color corrected. So um, that's a, that's a great use um, when working within layers. Um, also, uh, just creating actual brand new layers, you have buttons down here. Um, it's You can turn a layer into a, a clipping mask, which we'll get into later. Um, you can create a new sub layer for that layer that you have selected, or create a totally new layer. So we're going to go ahead and create a totally new layer. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do some green squares now. So and that's the beauty of these layers. So now that I have this layer, I have shapes, and you'll notice with my select check, Select all, and this can be a pain in the butt. And you want you want to grab a spe those specific red ones that are behind this this green one. You can do that by now selecting that specific layer. And you'll notice I can just move those reds around, or I can select the greens and just move the greens around. I can lock a specific layer, select all now, and I can move it around without worrying about affecting any of the other layers. So that that's a great great tool to have, um, and that's layers. Uh, the other um, ability you have within layers is an isolation mode. You'll notice I'll click this shape, and it doesn't even matter with the shape, but um, you can go ahead and hit enter isolation mode. And what this does allows you to mess with just this one uh, set of sh objects. So within this layer, I can go into isolation mode. Again, I'll show you. The red is kind of faded out. And that's to show you that right now you have that layer isolated and you can do some changes to it. So let's go ahead and mix it up a little bit. I'm just going to create a weird custom shape. Say I needed this specific piece of artwork, I needed to, to merge this with it. I'm going to go ahead and select them both and then I'm going to do an alt click unite, which will show the appearance. And I'll go ahead and let's go ahead and change that to red. Um, you know, keeps them merged together, but I needed to make that change. I can then double click to release the isolation mode. I'll show you another way to get out of it is click, let's go back into isolation mode. Uh, at the top, you'll notice um, the further you go into isolation mode, so each object I can keep clicking to get into another uh, isolation mode. 
um, I have the compound shape and go back up to layer two and then release the isolation mode. That's the second way you can do it. So that's isolation mode within layers. Um, you can flatten your artwork. Let's go ahead and do that. And flatten your artwork. You can see it just brought everything together into one layer. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Uh, let's go ahead and whoops, click our layer again. Um, you can turn the layer into a template. This is pretty nifty for when you're tracing stuff, which I'll show you um, in a later video. But uh, say you found a, a reference image online. Um, you know what? I'll go ahead and find one now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use one of my uh, recent paintings. I did, uh, if you're familiar with Dan Luvisi, he's, he's a pretty incredible art, artist. He created a book called Last Man Standing. I highly recommend checking it out. Um, but this is a piece of fan art that I did for it. Um, so in layer one, I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a template. I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer by clicking the new layer button. And now, with my brush tool and my Wacom tablet, select a color, I can now go ahead and trace this artwork if I wanted to. You know, so say you sketch something out and you want to go ahead and trace it, you can now go ahead and do that within these layers. So this is just a, do a real rough to kind of give you an idea of the possibilities that you have within these layers. This is just creating a new brush. Again, all this stuff I'll get into layer later um, in an, uh, you know, a further advanced tutorial. So that is turning a layer into a template. I'm going to go ahead and delete that one. Label this layer one. Okay. Zoom out so we can kind of see our ordered area. Okay, so let's go ahead and move further down. So you can hide all layers, you can outline all layers, and that is actually an aspect I forgot to show you. And this is another tool um, you have at your disposal when working within. Uh, so let's go ahead, I'll just change this to another color. Random here. Da -da, some random colors. Now, say you're trying to trace something out and you need to be able to see through. What you can do is click this layer and hit outline all layers. And what that's going to do is you're going to actually just see the paths. You won't see any appearances anymore. Um, you'll notice that the eyeball, the iris, has disappeared. And that's just showing you the, the path of the eye, which is essentially what's reflected um, in the working document. You can also toggle that. And you'll notice when I hover, it says control and then click to toggle the view mode. So I'm going to hold control click and it puts the the lid and the uh, iris back into the eyeball showing the visibility so again you have two uh, three specific modes you have the visibility mode you have it where it's not visible and then you can control click to turn it into outlines where you can get behind an object say this black and I wanted to bend this this anchor out and go into outline mode that allows me to just work with the path I'm not actually selecting the shape so I'm going to go ahead and undo what I just did to show you how that kind of works. So if I was here, you can see with the smart guide, I could select the shape and then grab the anchor. Um, but back here, if I wasn't using smart guides, I would have no idea where that anchor point is. You can control click the eyeball to get into visibility mode then click that anchor, drag it out, and you've made that change. Okay, so let's move further. Um, you can lock all layers. Um, and then you have paste remembered layers, so you can go ahead and select all these, cop go ahead and copy them. And let's go ahead and paste remembered layers. Whoops. Go ahead and delete that and then hit, whoops, turn that on, hit V, and it remembers the sub layers. <coughs> And the way they were stacked. So that's what that does. And I had to delete them. And again, you have your panel options. This is something that's just kind of personal preference. Um, you could do show only layers, change the size that the thumbnail of it is, um, and you know make all your kind of tweaks there. So that essentially is layers. It's not uh, not too hard of an aspect. So just keep in mind you can create shapes, create a new layer, to create a, a new shape. And it helps you stay organized, like here. Let's go ahead and cut that out, lock this layer, 
paste into uh, When you have this selected and you're trying to paste, it's remembering the layer, the layer that the copy was from. Uh, so turn that off. This will allow you to paste it into a separate layer. So um, here's our two shapes. I'm going to change the color so you can see, see the difference. So we now you can see that not only within a layer itself, which I'm in layer one, you'll notice. I'm going to create another shape. Change the color. Actually, let's deselect that one first create another shape. Not only do you have a stacking ability in the layers with arrange, object arrange, we'll to bring this send to the back, or whoops, object arrange send to the front, um, you have a stacking order, but you also have a stacking order with layers, and the layers help you stay organized. You'll notice I can move this around, lock that top layer, and I don't have to worry about these objects affecting my selection. So um, you have the ability to organize things. You can also control group or object group uh, the objects back into one layer if you want to and, and uh, keep your layer count down. Um, you'll notice that it keeps track of all your shapes in separate sublayers. So that's a, that's a wonderful uh, ability to have. And you have all these toggle options. The visibility, turning it into outline mode, turning it off if you don't want, um, being able to lock the layers, being able to select the appearances and you know apply them to other layers by clicking and then dragging uh, and then you have selecting individual selections of layers that you can toggle through uh, so that's layers um, I hope this was informative uh, and if it was feel free to leave some feedback in the comments section um, also feel free to subscribe and share and all that good stuff helps um, helps me continue to do what I do um, and Again, thanks for watching.